The 2022 World Cup in Qatar this year is filled with a bunch of teams that are favorites to win the whole thing, like Brazil, France, Argentina, and um, England for some reason. But there are also some teams that we should not sleep on. Four of them exactly, in my opinion. So in this video, we're going to talk about all four teams that could be considered dark horses for this year's World Cup. So without further ado, let's just get to it. What's up guys, my name is Drew, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, I'm one of those lonely American soccer fans here in America, and if you guys love soccer, or love that I call it soccer, then subscribe down below because we're going to cover everything soccer related on this channel weekly. So, uh, let's get to the topic. Like I was saying earlier, there are some dark horses in this World Cup that we should just not sleep on, okay? There's a total, I think, four in my opinion, more than it's just my opinion, if you don't like it, then, I don't know smash that like button, um, that I think are considered dark horses. Four nations in this World Cup. Let's just start it off. Number one is Senegal, the African champions, undefeated in their road to qualify to the World Cup. They did lose actually once. I'm lying. They did lose once. They were undefeated, but they just lost once. Just one little loss. And it's not really a loss because it's a two-legged affair. They tied it up on aggregate against Egypt and then beat them on penalties anyway to qualify. So technically... They're undefeated because they're not out. They're in. Egypt's out. And that's the second time they beat Egypt to something big on penalties. I think before was the African Cup of Nations, which made them the African champions uh, to begin with. So now they're in the World Cup. Great defense. Great players overall. Solid team. Nothing really too world-class like. But also nothing really too like, meh, they're going to get smashed. This is a good, solid team that good could come up with some good performances in the World Cup in their group. They do have a pretty tough group, though, in Group A with the Netherlands, Ecuador, and, of course, the host, Qatar. But I think this team has enough to get through second place, probably, with the Netherlands to the next knockout stages to face either USA or England, in my opinion, from the other group. I think it's Group B. Uh, they, some notable players that they have in their team are, of course, Sadio Mane, their golden talisman, their number 10, Recently left Liverpool to join Bayern Munich, so this guy is a real force to reckon with. Great scoring ability, great dribbler, great winger. He's just a really good world-class player. They've got Mendy and goal from Chelsea. Nice young prospect there as well, showing great performances with his team and also with his nation. And of course, big solid defender Diallo and Koulibaly to wrap up some of the uh, most notable names in their team. And also, they've got a mix a bunch of uh, League One and Premier League players here thrown around here and there in this team. Overall, this team is something special. The next nation I picked as a dark horse for the World Cup is, of course, Denmark. The Danish had a very successful World Cup qualifiers, winning 9 out of 10 games, scoring 30 goals, only conceding 3, Tied for most points overall in the UEFA qualifiers with Germany. This team has a great defense as shown by their qualifying campaign and recent friendlies. Defeated Austria and the world champions France recently in the Nations League. This is a hard team to break down defensively especially. And they have shown that they can not only defend but also score goals too. And they've got some really good players to do so. Players like their talisman Christian Eriksen. Players like Kasper Schmeichel in goal to keep all those goals out of the goal. Balls out of the goal, I mean. Uh, great defenders like Andreas Christensen, Yannick Vestergaard, just to name a couple. And also got some solid, notable names like Thomas Delaney and Pierre Hoiberg. Hope I said that right. I probably did not. But some good, rounded team overall. This, this team also is a team not to sleep on because they will wake it the fuck up. The third country I picked as a dark horse for this World Cup is a team closer to home for my USA fans out there. And that, of course, is our northern brothers, Canada. Canada, you know, I got to pick some CONCACAF teams here because we could represent CONCACAF. In general, we got to show the world that CONCACAF is on the rise, baby. The Canadians topped their CONCACAF standings for the World Cup qualifiers, I believe, for the first time in history, having the best scoring and defensive record out of the entire CONCACAF region. Playing their first World Cup since 1986, the Canadians seem to have their best ever group of talented players ready to go and make a big splash on the big stage in Qatar this year. Players like, of course, Jonathan David, Tejan Buchanan, and of course, their golden maple leaf, Alfonso Davies. Now they are in Group F with a really tough, tough group with the likes of Belgium, Morocco, and Croatia, who were runners-up in the last segment of the World Cup 2018. 
I think they could have enough to kind of sneak a couple of results in there, a little performances, maybe reach out to the knockout stages. It's going to be really, really tough. It's going to need some really special maple syrup to really get them out of this, you know, tough-ass group. But as a USMNT fan, I am rooting for you guys. And the last nation I picked for my dark horse for this edition of the World Cup, that of course is Serbia. Serbia finished their UEFA World Cup qualifiers unbeaten in a group that had Portugal in it. Not even Cristiano Ronaldo and his Portuguese team were able to take them down. In fact, Serbia beat Portugal away from home. Portugal was at home and Serbia went over there. You know, they were like, you know what? Psh, we'll still beat you guys. And they did. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. Now, they've been drawn into a pretty tough group as well with Brazil, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Brazil, like, uh, like we all are probably guessing, is presumably going to advance to the next stage of the World Cup. But I think they could also sneak a performance in, sneak some games in there, and qualify as second place at least to the knockout stages of the World Cup. And they've got the players to do so. You know, while they might not have the most recognizable names at first glance, if you look deeper into who actually plays for this team, you'll see a handful of players that you might you recognize and that could have something special or they could make something special happen. Players like Dusan Tadic, an amazing player. Alexander Mitrovic, who was like a Champions League uh, championship goal scorer machine for Fulham. Luka Jovic, if he can get back into this Frankfurt form, not his Real Madrid form, his Frankfurt form, that would be a pretty good striker to have up front. And of course, youngster Dusan Vlahovic as well. If I said that wrong, I apologize. But... Nonetheless, Serbia, I believe, is going to be a really nice team to really uh, upset a lot of teams and also show some people what they're really made of. Well, that is all I picked as my dark horses. I'm sure there is more in your guys' opinion. And I would love to know down below, who are your dark horses or underdog picks for this World Cup? And who on my list do you think is really not going to live up to the hype? And just don't say Canada just because it's Canada, okay? Because I know what you guys are going to say. If you guys liked the video, it would be great if you liked it physically with that like button. And of course, subscribe as well. It really means a lot to me. And I really want to grow this channel more for this World Cup. Because we're going to have so much fun. Live streams. We're just going to freaking hang out. And if you want to be part of that cool hangout, I don't know. Subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Peace.